You knew at 6, Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies are trying to track down a suspected child predator in Mesa. They've released this sketch of a man that they're hoping to identify, and they say that he followed a girl on Sunday and sexually assaulted her near the intersection of Adobe Road and Ellis Street. Anyone who might recognize this man is being asked to contact the sheriff's office. A former Arizona Coyotes player arrested in Scottsdale is accused of threatening police and using a racial slur. We learned a lot more today in court documents about what happened. Police say that Alex Galchenyuk crashed a BMW into a sign and a curb on Sunday near Scottsdale Road and Shea Boulevard. Police say that he was seen lying on the ground before another man put him in the car and then drove off while police pulled over that vehicle. They say both men were impaired. Galchenyuk is accused of threatening to harm police and their families, saying that he has ties to Russia. Detectives say that Galchenyuk also used a racial slur toward a police officer. He was booked on six counts, including hit and run, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. In a statement, the Arizona Coyotes organization says in part, we are aware of the incident involving Alex Galchenyuk and strongly condemn this type of behavior. The Arizona Coyotes today have exercised the team's right to terminate the contract of Alex Galchenyuk due to a material breach of the terms of his standard players contract. But first at nine tonight, a baby born with fentanyl in his system and in need of life-saving treatment is safe tonight. This after he was stolen from a hospital by his own mother. It's what prompted the Amber Alert we told you about last night at nine. The mother was found with the baby last night, and now we're learning more details about what exactly happened. Lindsay Regis joins us live to explain what was revealed in court today. Yeah, so we're learning that that baby is going through drug withdrawals. Now, when Santana and the baby were found, Santana was unconscious on a bed with drugs next to her. Miss Santana? Uh, Miss Santana, your date of birth, please. 41899. 24-year-old Rosa Santana told police she had her three other children removed from her custody. When she learned baby Santana tested positive for fentanyl, she took him from the hospital. Santana removed her five-day-old baby uh, from the pediatric intensive care unit uh, after learning that the infant had tested positive for fentanyl uh, and was most likely going to be removed by the Department of Child Safety. Court documents reveal the newborn had fentanyl in his umbilical cord sample, indicating long-term fentanyl use by Santana. There was no fentanyl around my, around my son. Last night, police found Santana unconscious on a bed with paper of powder residue consistent with fentanyl. Her baby was on the bed next to her. I never wanted any of this to happen. I never tried to hurt my own son. I was just trying to avoid a bunch of bunch more drama. According to court documents, Santana left the hospital and picked up her boyfriend. She was later found at her boyfriend's daughter's apartment in West Phoenix. When I did pull into the complex around the front, they were searching vehicles that were coming and going. Two officers inspected two vehicles, opened all doors and trunk. Santana told police she fed the baby at the apartment, and once he was asleep, she used fentanyl by inhaling the powder. It is very concerned about Ms. Santana's actions uh, and the safety of the victim. Santana remains in a jail tonight. Her bond is set at $10,000 cash. Now, if she is released, she will have to wear an ankle monitor and be drug tested. Reporting live, Lindsay Regis, Fox 10 News. Phoenix police arrest a man on murder charges. 23-year-old Ignacio Alvarez booked into the Maricopa County Jail on a charge of second-degree murder. Police say he shot and killed a man last night in an apartment complex at 51st Avenue in Thunderbird. Police say Alvarez acknowledged a role in the incident and was arrested at the scene. It's not clear what the relationship was between these two men or what led to the gunfire. It's a murder case that captivated the Valley for three decades. The so-called canal killer was sentenced to death earlier this year. Brian Patrick Miller, convicted of brutally murdering and mutilating his victims, dumping their bodies in the Arizona Canal in the early 90s. And tonight, for the first time, Fox 10's Nicole Garcia is getting an up-close look at some of the thousands of pieces of evidence from this case. And we should warn you, some of these evidence photos are graphic. 
Justice finally served for the families of Angela Brasso and Melanie Burness when Brian Patrick Miller was sentenced to death this year. It took more than 20 years, advances in genetic technology and familial genealogy to finally crack this case. About a thousand pieces of evidence were presented during the trial of Brian Patrick Miller. Ultimately, it was forensic evidence that sealed the case. Items collected from the scenes in the late 90s remained in bags and boxes for more than two decades. With new technology, detectives finally matched the unknown DNA sample they recovered. And that was the first case solved ever using forensic genetic genealogy in 2015. And that identified Brian Patrick Miller as the suspect in the case. Bloodied and torn clothing, underwear, the victim's bodies all provided detectives with a DNA sample of a then unknown male suspect. Police say an anonymous tipster told them about Brian Patrick Miller in the 1990s, but he wasn't considered a strong lead back then. It was pre-DNA. Uh, there was nothing at the time that linked him to the crime, and he really went uh, fell under the radar. In 2015, familial genealogists matched the unknown DNA to the last name of Miller. Police then tricked the newly identified suspect into leaving a DNA sample. Undercover officers posed as security guards that wanted to offer Miller a job. They met him at a restaurant and then got his saliva from this mug, which he drank out of and left on the table. That's very typical of collecting surreptitious samples. Um, you know, discarded DNA is discarded DNA. It, you have no, if I discard my DNA, I have no say so over it anymore. Brian Patrick Miller was convicted of both murders after a six month long trial. He was then sentenced to death and his attorneys are now appealing that death sentence. I'm Nicole Garcia, Fox 10 News.